Welcome to our new podcast, guys. My name is Stephanie Phillips. And I'm Ryan Phillips. And this is Comfortably Uncomfortable, where we are comfortable talking about uncomfortable experiences in our marriage and day-to-day life. We've been together for 12 plus years now, run a business together, and have been through the good, the bad, and the ugly that most marriages experience, but are not comfortable talking about publicly. Now, this is not just a podcast on marriage. Along our journey, we have also found a passion for health and fitness, which we will also be discussing, as well as our business journey we have been on together for the past seven years. If there are specific things that you would like to hear us discuss, please let us know on Instagram and TikTok at Stry Podcast. That's at S-T-R-Y Podcast or by emailing us at strypodcast at gmail.com. How was your day today? How was my day? My day was good. It was busy. Well, my afternoon wasn't going to be as busy and then it turned out to be a little busier. Oh, why did it turn out to be a little bit busier? Because I was taking your patience. Oh, why? Because you were stuck in a procedure. Stuck for two hours. You you <gasps> underestimated a procedure. And had a little complication, and it just went longer than Sometimes it was expected. Sometimes in our field, things don't go as planned, and yeah. it was a little bit of a... Um, That's our dogs trying to break in this room. Yeah, so it would be really great if one of our children could... Step in. But yeah. Let's handle the situation. Goes. Yeah. Let's see how many times that happens. Yeah. Anyways, um, in aesthetics, in medical, and dermatology, whatever, this was derm for sure. This was not cosmetic. No. And well, sometimes I mean, it all plays a role, but it, yes, does, yeah. it was a dermal But thing sometimes sure. things don't go the way you planned. And I ran into a complication that turned into a big complication that I was dealing with for two hours. That was yeah, supposed to take just, 15 minutes. Yeah, I came and I thought of, you were going to come and rescue me. First of all, I came out of my procedure, my tattoo removal, and then you weren't there. And then Amelia came and got me and was like, hey. Amelia is my assistant. Yeah. She gets a little flustered. So I can tell like I she comes her. in, she's like, oh, uh, Steph wants to know if you can see her touch ups or her patients. And I was like, what's what? I'm like, are you guys having problems in there? She's like, yeah, it's big. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, okay, no problem. Like so, the problem yeah, was big. <laughs> yeah. The problems. Not even that, like the, yeah, yeah, whatever the issue was. But whatever. Whatever. Double entendre. <laughs> so, um, I was like, yeah, no problem. So I saw your, a few of your patients and then I'm like, and you're still not out yet. And I'm like, what the hell? And then, two hours later. and then there's another patient waiting for you, a new patient, um, specifically wanting to see you yeah. for, for whatever. Wellness program. Yeah. So I was like, all right, Danny, who's my assistant, bring her. <laughs> Bring Steph's patient, next patient, to the back. I'm like, offer her, just tell her Steph's in the middle of something real quick. She's going to get to her as soon as she can. Offer her water. Or, she said or she whatever. didn't wait, yeah, wait very whatever. long. She no. was late. She, and, and she then, was outside signing consents yeah, for a while. So yeah. it wasn't that long, but I was like, just cater to her. Yeah. And then till Steph. And then two hours later. Dude, I walk out. My hair is like a frizz ball. I'm sweating. But I got everything under control, and the patient ended up being perfect. Yeah. But it just... A complication. Yeah, because I had an early lit. day all planned out. I was gonna go to the bank. Yeah, and do all these things, and then it turned it out. It turned well, out you want to know how crazy the yeah. universe works, though. I had that procedure that went that went bad, out of my control. Couldn't help it. Two hours was stuck in there. My patient after her had been numbing, and I go in to see her, and she has a bouquet of flowers and a thank you card for me for a favor I yeah. did for her a couple months ago, and I was like, see. That was the universe. Yeah. And just to clear the record, the reason I didn't go in there when she said, like, I wish Ryan would just come in here is because it was a very personal. It was on the vagina. It was, yeah. It was a vaginal issue. The patient yeah. didn't want, feel comfortable with the man in the she room. She was already I, insecure about what we were yeah, addressing. Which I totally get. Yeah. And that's why I couldn't come and help. He couldn't come rescue yeah. me. And he, I don't, I th- you would have. Yeah. Because you love that shit. Oh, I love that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I don't do well with a lot of blood, just for the record. I'll put myself out there. I'm just not that kind of nurse. You know, I tried it. I did ICU. I did ER. And I'm just not that kind of nurse. It is what it is. So a lot of blood freaks me out. Like where I get like borderline going to pass out or I might throw up. I don't know, but everything's looking weird. Second time. (laughs) 
fucking dogs. But you think they would they would do something about it? Who? The kids? No. Oh. Yes, the kids. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Jeez. Don't get me. You got me. <laughs> <laughs> what were you just talking about? We're talking about me. Oh, the blood. Yeah. See, blood doesn't phase me in that way. In my mind, it's like, damn, this is making a mess. And I, <laughs> I don't want to be the one to clean this up. That's what would go through my head. But as far it wasn't, as... We had it under control. Yeah. Yeah. I'm talking about like big... Yeah. Like in the hospital. Yeah. Like when you see like yeah. crazy stuff. So yeah. So I don't like blood. Like a lot yeah. of blood. And there was a lot of blood in this procedure. And typically, I don't do these procedures. He does. And I was the one to do it because it was in a, a woman's private area. And she felt comfortable with me. So I was like, fuck it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to man up today. Yeah. It didn't go well. But Amelia said that I kept my composure and that nobody would have known that I was exactly. like, fuck, get it, me out it of here. It didn't go wrong as like the patient yeah. was no, she issues. was be- yeah. beautiful after. Yeah. She didn't even realize what was going on. It was just from a... Pre- uh, from a medical standpoint, yeah. she had no idea what was going on because she's not medical. And from my standpoint, it was one of those things yeah. like, this can happen. We got to just deal with it. Yeah, so she... Um, it's funny. If anybody's in aesthetics or derm, they're like, what the fuck happened? We want to know. They could probably guess it. I mean... But yeah, it's-, it's fine though. And um, so I think I did a good job at keeping my composure and then you made a statement that you were shocked that I came out like still in a good mood we literally were just talking about that I know yeah because old Stephanie or maybe Stephanie not too long ago I feel like you would have came out like and let it ruin the rest of my day yeah let it ruin the rest of your day very short the rest of the day Mm -hmm. um take it out on me kind of rest of the day, like the conversation we had in, on a couple podcasts ago. Anyways. Yeah. But you came out and you were like, cool as can be. Other than saying like, your back hurt, you're sweating, which I get. Yeah. And then you finish your patience, like the boss you are. Yeah, I didn't ask you to take anybody else. I only had you take the people I had to have you take. Yeah. yeah. And our patients are so cool that I well, love Well, I had that, to like, do Ashley's employee day. Poor Ashley was numbing I for like know, two and a half hours. I know, I felt so bad. <laughs> I'm like, you must be super numb right now because yeah. you've been numbing. It She's was just like keeps passing week, me in the so, hallway and I'm like. And all of our sorry. employees get services done for free. Yeah. And to, and our last employee that was out of town and missed it and she was there today. She, poor thing. Yeah. But whatever. She was oh, okay. She, she looked beautiful. Yeah. No, she got it. Um, so, sir. This conversation today is supposed to be all about sex. Oh, yeah? Yes. Like, what I about think, it? Like, that's it. <laughs> what about it? So, a lot of people ask about sex advice and, like, especially in the office, like, how we deal with hormone replacement and, like, libido and, you know, patients struggling with that. It's a question that gets asked a lot. Like, mm-hmm. you know, how how are you so into your husband? And, like, obviously you're hot. But like still, people don't don't. I won't. I won't. But you know, the question gets asked of like, you know, how did you guys correct your sex life? Yeah, because it was something that we've spoken about a few times. Yeah. So I think our sex life has, sex life has drastically changed and drastically improved in, for the better. Yeah. In the last few years. Probably like two. Oh, I was thinking like three. Three. It's been better for me for three years. <laughs> Maybe I'm just thinking of you. how long. Sorry, I'm moving again. Yeah. I'm just thinking about how long I've been on testosterone. Yeah. Yeah. Same though. Yeah. Oh, you've only been on testosterone for three for two years. Yeah. Really. A little less than two years, actually. Really. Wow. I thought it was what much longer. No. I thought it was at least three. Nope. Because that's when it kind of changed, but. We had the conversation, the uncomfortable conversation before TRT. No, we, things were changing before that. Yeah, yes. We had that. This was before that. But TR, the testosterone was a big, I think, helped a good yeah. amount. Yeah. It definitely. For sure. Benefited. For me, life. too. Because yeah. I'm on testosterone. Low dose, obviously. But for sure. But yeah. yeah, you know, it improves libido and things like that. But also, like, I think, like. Anybody can correct libido with the, with the right measures. True. But like having that spark. Oh, yeah. That chemistry, that that's the conversation we had. Yeah. 
that I think. No, that has to happen. The, like you said, the libido, the hormone, yeah. whatever, um, you know, fit, uh, physical yeah. health thing that's going on. That's true too. It's just part of it. I mean, yeah. because when you feel good, you feel sexier. You feel like I never wore the things I wear now. Never. Yeah. Right? I mean, I always no. wore your t-shirt. No, you definitely build your confidence and your yeah. self-esteem. 100%. Yeah. And then you just kind of like become sexier with that. But so that, that's a different. I think so that's actually a, a, a big part of a it. big part of yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Because you odd, oddly enough, like not that it's odd, but you like clothing. You like lingerie. You like things like that. And for me to never wear it, I think most men I, do. No, but I, we never even experimented with it. True. So I don't know. I didn't know. True. But you would always make comments of like asking me to wear it. Because you always would but be I like, wouldn't feel comfortable. Daddy, I bought you the, I bought some nice stuff. She's been telling me this for years. I never oh, would wear I, it. Oh, I bought so much stuff. You're, I can't wait. And I've never seen any of it. Nothing. Nothing. I'm like. And now I'm, you have. Now I have. But I'm like, you keep telling me. Years I had things, it. And I've never once seen it. Sorry. I just took the tags off. <laughs> <laughs> you can't return lingerie it's usually crazy. when you order online. But yes, your physical appearance helps. That I mean, of course, if you feel more self confident, and, yeah. and you're definitely gonna be more confident. Yeah, and like yeah. you just feel sexier. You want to be seen. You want to, you know, leave the lights on, kind of thing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But I think that with having like conversations about like what you like to, but see, like when we had the conversation, you know, what's crazy. We had that one conversation and we've never really talked about it or like revisited that again. Which one? The first conversation we had where I literally sat down and I said, I absolutely hate having sex with you. And you were yeah, shocked. I was just about to say that. Yeah. And you were shocked. Mm -hmm. Like your, your face was like, I it just broke got my shot. heart. I just got shot. Right in the sternum. I'm sorry. In case I, I, I don't like feel like nowhere, that anymore, think, obviously. Yeah. But yeah, it came out of nowhere. We were literally like sitting at the dinner table and I said, out of nowhere, I absolutely hate having sex with you. And I remember exactly what I said and your face. I said that. And you looked at me like you were crazy. And I said, I wish that I could be married to you, be with you, amazing husband, business partner, my best friend but I wish I could fuck somebody else. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? And you Brutal. were like devastated. Mm -hmm. You looked at me and it was me just being completely brutally honest with you. Yeah. Like, and telling you exactly how I felt. And I had felt like it for years and I never had the balls to say it. And imagine like shame on me, you know, imagine how yeah. much sooner we could have like resolved things. Cause I think men are much easier, easily easier? are more easily pleased it doesn't take as it doesn't much. take as much effort for men in my opinion um i think that a lot of people can agree with that that it doesn't take as much effort as it does for when a woman I say effort i said it doesn't take as much thinking i don't know no i think you have to think yeah because if a weird thought comes up pff, done yeah yeah you know me no I <laughs> it happens to me too it's like whoa no, sometimes I get way too much into my head. I used to be really bad. With yeah. That. yeah. Well, like this morning in the garage, I swore I heard the kids up the entire time walking upstairs. Never did. Yeah. He's big into fucking in the garage, in the gym. <laughs> it's just something he likes to do. It doesn't matter what we're doing or how sweaty we are. It doesn't matter. But today I was like, oh, I can't stop thinking that the kids are going to fucking walk out here. We're going to be ruined. I'm like thinking in my head, like, don't pull out. Because then they'll see you. Like, just stay and freeze. Just like <laughs> freeze and hope they didn't see you. <laughs> but you would probably like push me away, cover yourself. But then it's done. They saw it. I would. They saw your dick for sure. No. Dick and balls. I would be covered. They would just be like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. Why are you guys <laughs> on the floor like animals? What the fuck is going on I had on leaves here? in my hair. Yeah. Did you? I had leaves in my hair. You didn't even We're tell on me. a mat. First of all, it's like a rubber floor. <laughs> they know what our gym looks it's like if they a, watch your YouTube. We're not on our like concrete. Yeah, right? we're not on concrete. <laughs> just, just so just so Ryan had to specify that. Or at least more accurate. 
Yeah. Um, Back to that uncomfortable conversation. Yeah, though. of course. That was a horrible conversation. Yeah. And we fought about it at first. And, and we, we were fought. Very, yeah. And I think I just took it all in. And I think we kind of, like you said, we didn't really speak of it again. No. And then it would just, it, it got better from there. Slowly. It was like we would be having sex and then you would ask me, like, what do you want me to do? Yeah. I think I was more vocal yeah. in, in asking what you prefer. Yeah. Because you don't like to speak at all in sex. It's actually really funny. You yeah. get so weird. Like he laughs, he'll giggle. And so he just doesn't speak. Like it's it's a mute, which is kind of hot too. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm doing enough sounds. It's, just, a, not, it's just not English it's language. But so Anyways. then once you started asking me things, then it was like, oh, wait, who the fuck are you? You know? Mm -hmm. And then from there it turned into like, well, what do you like? And then we would get high and just have like a sex talk. Like, so do you like it when I do this mm -hmm. or, you know, like. I think, yeah, just once the communication yeah. was just open. And open it was like, and finally open. This is what humans are made for. Yeah. Made for is for rebreeding. I mean, like this is what yeah. we're supposed to be doing. Yeah. So to, to, to have well, it. Well, the funny thing is, is that I think, and we talked about this not that long ago, you read about it in a book, is that a lot of men think that like you have your penis, right? And like whatever size it is, is what you got. Mm -hmm. And you guys think that just thrusting in and out of us is pleasurable. And for some women, they can get off from that. But a high majority of women mm -hmm. cannot. And it's so funny that you guys are like, rah, yeah. Yeah, and you guys think like you're so macho and bad, and it's like, really, bro, you didn't do shit. I'm gonna go take care of myself in the bathroom when you fall asleep, you know? Because that's what's happening in a lot of households. <laughs> we were talking about one thing and it just totally went another way, but okay, whatever. Yes. But you, we talked about this though. Yes, you read did. about it. I did read. About you it. literally, he read a book. He's reading a book that is a great book. Yeah, I put it in the YouTube on my boob surgery video, yes. so, so you can refer reference to that. it there. But. Oh. Um, I'll speak on it. Yes. So there was a section I, of the okay, book I'll, on sex. Yes. I'll <laughs> speak on it because it's about men. Don't yell at me. Jeez, you're going a little crazy here. Let's, let's reel it back in. Okay. Reel it back in. <laughs> Anyways. Shit. Um, yes. The book talks about how men, you know, as men, we have this thing that, you know, we just go the harder and faster you go, yeah. the better it feels for them. And that's not the case guys that's not the case the case is at all it's different different angles and stuff that can hit their spot that is the key and that it's <laughs> just the goal the book is just talking about how men just have most men are clueless when it comes to sex yeah. and most men won't admit that like i will admit it because we're talking about it now and like, you don't give a fuck yeah yeah so I was one of those guys that just didn't even think about that. Just, you know, just in and out, blah, well, blah, 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 blah. You're kind of raised, like, even, like, as women, like, to please your man. And, you know, like, there, there's always that saying, like, well, if you're not pleasing him, someone yeah. else is. Mm -hmm. So there's always, like, this almost, like, narrative that's painted out for you where you please your husband and you worry about yourself later kind of attitude. And that's kind of what I always thought. Mm -hmm. You know, like it was always about you getting off mm -hmm. and then we're supposed to take care of ourselves. I think that's still, that's how it is in most relationships. Right. But see like what we, my, where I'm going with this though, is that one thing that we decided as a couple was we don't get out of that bed or that car or the garage or wherever we are, the couch, doesn't matter, bathroom. We do not leave that area until both parties are satisfied. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like that was an unspoken rule and we kind of have stuck to it for the last like three years, yeah. two years. No, that was. Which is huge yeah. because it's like one of those things where it doesn't necessarily have to be intercourse. You know what I mean? Where in the me in the guy's case where he completes and usually the rebound isn't quick enough for the timing that people have, to be honest. Mm -hmm. And, but when you go to grab like a vibrator, or something, and then you take care of your woman, that's a game changer in your household, in my opinion. Because now you're showing that you guys are on the same level of respect, you know? Yeah. Where, like, my sexual needs are just as important as a man's sexual needs. Exactly. 
So, but I say shame on a lot of women out there, including you back in the day. Like if you, if you fake it, it's a sensitive subject. If you fake it, that's on shame on you. And if you're not having the conversation about your needs, shame on you. Number two, men are just dumb and we are linear and we just do what we know to do until we are redirected. Yeah. So I've, I've said that though. Yeah. Like shame on me, but it was one of those things too, though, babe, where I was kind of struggling with my own sexuality and what I like and what I, and my body, you yeah. know, it was one of those things like, no, it's, it's a tough situation for anybody. Yeah. But. It's like, it was very, very bizarre for me. And like, I had my own things that I was mm. going through from previous relationships that kind of had fucked me up mentally. And not to say like to blame anybody for what I would never do that. But you know what I mean? Like yeah. there's different, I had, I got pregnant with Gabby at a very young age. I had her at a very young age, you know, so my perception of sex was always kind of skewed from a very young age, if that makes sense. No, it does. So I think that that's the case though for a lot of women. Yeah. And I think that that's why you're then not comfortable, you know, saying, well, then I could say shame on you for not making me comfortable enough to come to you with my uncomfortable situation. And I just said, it's not, it's not an easy conversation for you to bring up and it's not going to be an easy conversation for the man to hear. Yeah. And the man will probably most likely get angry, get angry and a fight may occur so if you're listening to this and anyone's taking it, like trying to do take this, advice from this, I think the conversation, no matter what needs to be done, needs to be done at the right time. Yeah. And you guys just need to listen to each other and maybe take a little while and absorb it and digest it. Yeah. Cause I remember we before, didn't have sex for a while. Yeah. Because you that. might like someone's going to get upset. Yeah. Something's going to happen and it shouldn't turn into a fight. It should be something to improve Grow your from. relationship, not destroy it. So I just want to put that out there because I think it's not going to go well. It won't go well for most (laughs) people. The conversation did not go well. Unless the man is open, like some guys, some guys are just, you know, they're, they're very receptive. And if that's the case, then um, go for it. But I think it needs to be done, but it needs to be done at the right time. And it needs, and you guys need to like be able to work through it. Yeah. I don't think you said one word in that conversation. No. Yeah. I think it was just me. Yeah. But it felt great. It felt like when I finally said what I had wanted to say for like seven years, eight years, hmm. eight years, maybe nine. But when I finally like got that off my chest and like was literally seeking help from you yeah, to, you know, figure it out. And for both of us, once I did that, it was like a weight lifted. I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, but, like you always say. What separates us as a couple versus... I always say this. Everybody else in the room. Everyone else in the room. What is the one thing that separates you and your spouse, most spouses, but you and your spouse from anybody else that you hang out with? It's intimacy. Mm -hmm. If you don't have intimacy, you do not have a foundation because that is the one place for the both of you to be vulnerable. That is the one place where the both of you like... That the not that long ago you were literally we were naked after sex and you're laying on my ass literally with your face in my ass just laying there we were just chilling yeah. and I was like who isn't it crazy that you can't do this with anybody else and I said I was like you and Kevin can't just sit here and chill and <laughs> you know smoke a joint and lay lay on each other you just can't do that you do that with only your partner your spouse yeah and I was like that's pretty cool and you were like that is pretty cool yeah it was like just a cool moment. You know, we were just laying in weird positions. We didn't have phones. We were just like holding each other yeah. naked. But it's like the one thing that separates you. That was you. in Boston, wasn't it? No, honey, it was here. No, we just. We did it then too. But <laughs> but when we had that conversation, we were in our bed. We were, were listening we? to music. It was daytime. We had just had sex. Mm. And I, you were laying on me. I was facing the mirror, the dresser. Mm. And you had your head the other way. Yeah. Yeah. It was I know here. what you're saying. So. Yeah, it's the one thing that separates you. So you have to have like some of the ladies, like we we do vaginal health at our office and I will talk about it or it'll be on the screen and they're asking about it. And patients are like, oh, I don't give a fuck about my, what he thinks about my vagina after being married so long. And it's like, that's sad. Yeah. That's sad. You should care what he thinks about your vagina. And you should care about his penis and his libido. You know, it's yeah. just goes hand in hand because that's 
Yeah. You know, like you said, what we were made it's funny, to do. I woke up to a infomercial the other night in Boston. It was like yeah. erectile dysfunction. And it literally, and I was just up because you were asleep and the remote was the freaking iPad and it was just nightmare. a whole nightmare. And I was listening to him and he's like, it's not whether, it's not when, it's not if you get erectile dysfunction at some point. It's it's like, when are you going to get it? Whether right. it's due to hormone imbalance yeah. or or disease or whatever, you're, you know, you're bound to get it. So as a woman, you should care. And just as a man, super the, the, the <laughs> woman, men do care, you know, I, I know. Yeah. So yeah. they do care. And then it goes back to but, physical appearance. But also too, like we've been hearing about so many people cheating lately. Like it's really fucking me up mentally, fucking me up so bad that last night I literally rolled over to you and I was like, are you happy? No, Can I do anything? done it the last three days. It's been super annoying. Oh my God, babe. Everybody's <laughs> cheating and I keep finding out and it's so disappointing. And then she's like, it's got plans in her head already. Like, okay, well, if you do leave, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I don't like it. It scares <laughs> me. So I'm like, are you happy? Is there anything that I need to be doing? Is there this? And he looks at me, you looked at me last night and you were like, happy people don't cheat. Yeah. When you're unhappy, there's something going on either with you personally with your relationship, with whatever's going on, that's when people usually seek that outlet yeah. because it feels nice to feel nice. And that's the thing is that like when I get hit on and things like that, it doesn't make me feel any type of way because you make me feel that type of way. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like that's why I was like, no, married, flattered, thank you. But it's like you, because you fulfill that for yeah. me, which I think a lot of husbands don't do for their wives. Yeah. And if you're missing it, then that yeah. compliment might be what you were fiending for that right. day and then it's like oh, oh he noticed me or yeah. she noticed me and that felt nice yeah and they're making an effort to make me feel nice that's a big issue too <sighs> yo issue. we can go but on for goes, days about this it, shit but it all it's all the same underlying thing and it's com lack of communication no but i think that sometimes we forget as couples that we need to show appreciation to our spouse we need to you're like, uh, my therapist said this about you years ago, years ago. And I didn't really believe it, but you're a very much like words of affirmation kind of person. And I never really did that. I was never really that warm, fuzzy person. You know that mm -hmm. back in the day, I really wasn't. I was very like drill sergeant, didn't care. No PDA. Don't kiss me in public. I was very much like that. Whereas now like we'll make out in the middle of the hallway in the office, but we were never like that because I never, I never, I never opened up to you like that. I never dropped that wall from like previous pain or whatever. And then once I did and like I started giving you words of affirmation and telling you you're hot because I never used to do that. Now I tell you you're hot like six times a day. And or I'm talking about you being hot to somebody and you overhear it. But once you do that though, then the other person is like more willing to give you compliments as well because it goes hand in hand, you know? Yeah. Like, I feel like then you became more open. You became more touchy-feely, which I like now. Yeah. You I'm know? definitely more. Everyone knows my, like, I don't think I show the greatest emotion, do I? I no, yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah. So. Not always. Not always. At I, home, I you're a different I internalize a lot of things. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I definitely, I feel like have come a little way. Yeah, a lot. Yeah. A lot of way. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of way. A long uh, way. Yeah. I think open communication is key. Uh, yeah. Showing your, you know, your, your, your significant other appreciation, your appreciation. value, yeah. praise them, you know, gas them up. I mean, they deserve that, you know, and that's your, that's your life partner. I mean, yeah. why wouldn't you want to do those things? I mean, yeah. you would want to make them feel. Well, better. here's an example. My friend was telling me yesterday that she came down the stairs to leave for dinner. They were going out with a group of friends and her husband told her to turn around and go back upstairs because her dress was too short. And it's like, if I came down in a short dress, you would smack my ass, tell me I'm hot and then walk me out the door, mm -hmm. you know? So it's like one, I would do say that because you're hot and yeah, you don't, you would never. Number two is <laughs> yeah. like, yo, I don't want you to fucking go back upstairs and change because <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's going to yeah, be another yeah. hour. Get your ass in the car. I don't care what you're wearing. You could be wearing nothing. Honey. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> but yes, with guys like that, though. They're insecure. It's insecurity. Yeah. Because you have to be. And I used because, to be that way. Because I feel like, to confirm uh, that it's insecurity, she's fucking hot and he's not. 
and she's lost a ton of weight yeah, and I looks don't even good. Know these people, but I feeling can just for, tell you. feeling herself. I'll tell you who I'm talking about later. Feeling herself, blah blah blah, and he's like still stuck in his rut, you know. And 30 years old, looks like he has a dad bod. He's not even a dad yet, and you know has just kind of let himself go after high school. And it's like you know, you should tell your wife that she's beautiful and leave if she wants to wear that and thinks that she looks good. You should support well, her. Well, he thinks she's hotter than him. And he's nervous. That's insecurity. He's insecure. Right. Yeah. That's mean. I don't like that. But I felt, I know that feeling. Yeah. And it still really? will cross minds slightly. I mean, insecurity, a lot of people have insecurities. Wait, you sometimes want me to go change? No, not saying that. But like but when like, I see a guy like hitting on you or here because you love to tell me about it, a part of me wants to like, who the fuck? Who? <laughs> <laughs> who said what now? What are we talking about? But that part of me is like, all right, whatever. I'm the one that's going home with her or the she comes home to me every night. We're exactly. going home together. Exactly. So you just have to. And I'm all over you. Yeah. Which is just disrespectful for, for the guys. But it goes back to appearance. And if you put in the work, you know, yeah. get healthy, you know, better yourself from the inside. Show it will show on the outside. Show you care about bettering yourself. Your sex yeah. life's going to improve. Your, your marriage is going to improve. Your self-esteem is going to improve. Your insecurities yeah. are going to melt away. Like, yeah. Why? Like, I don't understand what's wrong with this world. You get crazy with it. Yes. It's just making simple lifestyle changes that's yeah. going to benefit you in all aspects of life. Like, the comment the patient said today about, what do I have, like 10, 20 more years max? Yeah, and she's, like she's 50 only years. 50. Yeah, and I'm like, what? You're going to die at 60 or 70 years old? live to 60? And I said, I'm going to be st- I'm gonna be golfing at 70, Yeah, wa- living on the beach, yeah. walking. Yeah, you know, but like, people say that all the time to us, though. It's like, what the fuck? That's my plan. Yeah. Like, but I don't it just, know. It just it makes you crazy. I know. But it all goes back to what we're talking about in sex life. I mean, yeah. how can you have a good sex life if you're obese or overweight? Yeah. Like just the physical working. I mean, having sex is a difficult physical activity. Like Well, what's the one reason that you do cardio? Yeah, to improve that. That's a you big used to suck at it. Yeah. He couldn't like it, he would like get a cramp or like be like it's, dripping sweat and like all, totally guys, out of breath. We're holding planks and we're freaking <laughs> thrusting <laughs> hip thrusts and we're bending our knees like and my quads are stretching like things. You're using muscles that you're not. Tra- I'm a pretzel. Listen here. You throw me around like a rag doll. All you have to do is stretch for a few hours a day. You'll be good. <laughs> that is my. I got to do a lot more. <laughs> You definitely stress. That's what me. I was talking about in the beginning of the show about the effort thing because men could put in a lot of effort physically, yeah. but it's not the right type of effort. Anyways. Right. But how can you have a good like a good sex like like you physically can't get into certain positions or yeah. please the other person in certain ways because your physical body doesn't, doesn't allow, allow you to do yeah. it. I mean yeah. It all it's all tied together. I yeah. think to have a better marriage means to have a better sex life, means to be more physically, you know, healthy. Yeah, um, I think it's important healthy. to make sure that your needs are being met, but the needs of your spouse are being met as well. Yeah. And that like all parties are, you know, it's just how many people, how often do people sit down at dinner and say like, hey, is there something that you'd like me to do different in sex? You know, or like, hey, is there, do you like what I do to you? Is there something you'd like different? Because everybody likes things different. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like how often do people say that? No. I said it to you the other day. Yeah. You, I think we're on our walk and you asked me, is there anything you're, you feel like you're lacking in the bedroom? Yeah. And I said, no. Yeah. But you wouldn't, I don't know if you would tell me. I don't know if you tell me. Now's the time, right? Yeah. In front of people. You're so weird. It's such a weird fetish. What? It's, your fetish that in you front of people? yes i don't I it's don't not physically. in front of people it's yeah. not in front of people he likes the, the fact, risk ah. okay shit he likes the fear of knowing somebody could possibly see us so it's like he doesn't want people to see us but he likes the fear that it is possible that somebody could walk by it's not the or fear whatever that so it's just to know that someone could potentially be watching yeah there's no fear involved yeah but if you saw that they were watching you would stop 
it just depends from where and like how you close would stop are we. One hundred percent. If they walked right here, yeah, I'd be like, "Yo, it's fucking weird." <laughs> but I'm saying if if we're on a cruise ship and the and our, we have a balcony and the blinds are wide open, yeah. and there's another cruise ship across the water and yeah. someone's in their balcony looking at us. And I make eye contact with that person. They're all the way on another balcony. I'd probably let it ride. <laughs> <laughs> We've never it's had like, this conversation. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We've never had this conversation. Why do you well, all of a sudden become Australian? I don't know. I just feel like saying it. <laughs> Hello, mate. Hello. <laughs> Are you is that British? I don't know. I don't know. I don't I'm like, what the fuck is happening? Anyways, because like on our last cruise no the time before the last without the kids when we had the balcony mm -hmm. remember we were at port at like i know what in you're the bahamas say. or something yes and then there was another boat right across the port not the, far up here from us yeah and we had the, and i opened the windows yeah you didn't want them open yeah but i just didn't say anything but it's a small little hole it's like see it's like it's the odds of someone seeing you are very slim, but just knowing. That so I don't put possible. myself in like risky positions. I think it's hot. Okay. I think it's hot. Maybe and I think alone. it's even hotter because it makes me uncomfortable and I do it anyways for you. Gotcha. Right? Because that's a whole nother topic that we can go down is alpha and inside the bedroom and outside the bedroom. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a lot of scenarios throughout the day where... I unfortunately have to be, I hate to say alpha, but the dominant one in the relationship in our lives, you know? And so like, it's one of those things where like in the bedroom, it's the one place, one time that I don't want to have to be dominant at all, Yeah, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's almost like an alter ego that I have because it's like, are you comfortable talking about this? Yeah, I'm just listening. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. I, I I got like the eye. I was like, I, think was I rewind the tape. There's no eye. <laughs> I'm just listening. But like you know, like I felt like I needed to explore that kind of like almost like being submissive to you. Mm -hmm. But the other problem was is that you weren't really comfortable with being a dominant. Yeah. In the bedroom. To a certain extent. Yeah. But again, like. But you really weren't comfortable at first. Yeah. Like it was. It was awkward. It was very awkward. Yes. But then once you kind of like realize like, oh, wait, this is kind of fucking hot, mm -hmm. number one. And number two, like, this is what she wants. Like, it was a, a game changer, I think, in yeah. the bedroom. Because it's true. Like, you do just sometimes, like, especially as women, like, when you're constantly a fucking bitch all day and, like, you have to put out fires and, like, have to deal with things. And then you get home and you just don't want to have to think, you know? And it's one of those things like, yeah, sure, whatever you want. <laughs> You know? Yeah. You know, these lights turn red and then, you know. The red room. The whips come out. Oh, shut up. You ain't got no whips. <laughs> Not with me. Not with me. We, we explore toys. Mm -hmm. Toys are fun. That's an, I, I, I could go on for days about this. The list keeps growing. <laughs> the list. <laughs> because it's true that you, like, you were offended the first time I brought a vibrator into the bed. You said it the other day when we had this conversation. Say it. It. <laughs> <laughs> it was uncomfortable, I think. It was just, it's just like. Weird. Because as a man, you feel like you shouldn't, your woman shouldn't need those. Like and you should be enough for her and should be um, more than enough for her. Mm -hmm. But again, to realize. I'm. Like what I said, what we said earlier, men just go in there they think the faster they go, the harder they go, but that's not always the case. And there's different stimulation that women like more than others. And some things we can't mimic or a toy can be not, it's I don't, just a I don't tool. think it it's supplements not, no, it, but yeah. it just And that's what you thought it. though. Yeah. You thought that the, my vibrator was replacing your penis yeah. and that wasn't the case. And that's not the case, gentlemen. The point is, it is a tool that can basically help because sometimes as women, we just take longer, you know, versus like having that, it just helps us get along quicker, you know? Yeah. So, but that's another thing that, you know, conversations come up and I never had done that. I had a freaking friend of mine tell me like, yeah, I never have sex without a vibrator. 
Yeah. And I was like, But I think that could what? be a problem. Like, there has to be, like, it can't be, I mean, may, unless you really need it every single time, like, I feel like you should be able to sometimes use it, sometimes not use it. No, it just depends. Yeah. Yeah. Especially, like, in public. You just don't always have what you need. Yeah. You should be able to have sex in public yeah. if you don't But have. again, if that's what makes you have that yeah. feeling that you like, then by all means, go for it. Yeah. I having that conversation about it. But it goes back to we don't we both don't leave until we're both happy. Yeah, satisfied. And because I will vocalize. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, no, <laughs> we're not done here. <laughs> but yeah. It's it all goes down to communication and also like self love, self care, things like that to make sure that you have to love yourself to love someone else, right? For sure. Hundred percent. Anyways. Yeah. Well. That was the long conversation. Yeah, I didn't mean for it to go that long. So thank you guys for tuning in again thank with you. this sex talk. As we discover more things about our sexuality together, oh, we will have a part two of this. But until then, peace out, people. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. We hope that you enjoyed this episode just as much as we did making it for you. If there are specific things that you would like to hear us discuss, please let us know on Instagram and TikTok at Stry Podcast. That's at S-T-R-Y podcast or by emailing us at strypodcast at gmail.com. Please be sure to follow us on Spotify and turn on your notifications so you don't miss out on new episodes dropping every Thursday. You can also check us out on YouTube under Stephanie Phillips with weekly episodes releasing every Tuesday. You can also go back and see my entire journey to my first bikini competition, which we documented from start to finish. Thank you all so much for the love and support because without you guys, none of this would be possible. We will see you next time.